Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, senior professors who are here, colleagues and dear friends. Uh, today we have with us uh, Dr. Vignesh Muthusamy, scientist from Indian Agriculture Research Institute. Uh, basically, he is a plant builder. Uh, he did his UG from TNU, he is an alumni of TNU, did his PG and PhD from IRI. <coughs> Currently, he is uh, focusing on biofortification of maize. He is working on nutritional quality as well as well as some specialty traits in case of corn. And he has guided uh, six MSc students and currently four PhD students are uh, working with him. 110 publications. And if you look at the awards, he got all three awards, Young Scientist Award from all three National Science Academies, INSA, NASI, NAS. And he also got NASA Associateship in the year 2022, and he is the Fellow of Indian Society of Genetics and Plant Bedding. And he got Senior Saramanujan Award of Young Scientist, CPB, and Pran Ora Award by Indian INSA, Indian Science, sorry, Indian Science Congress Association. And he also got Mays Asia Innovators Awards, awarded by SIMIT. And for his PhD work, he got award in 2014. And he also received IRA Merit Medal for Outstanding Academic PhD. And uh, he is also helping our students in focusing some of the research work, especially in case of maize. And TNE is collaborating with him, in, especially in maize research. His team, actually, Vignesh and Dr. Firoz Hussain, they are helping us in getting new inbreds and uh, uh, taking up new kind of research by our students. And uh, once the MOU is signed, uh, we hope our students will be able to do their part of their research work in IRI. It is in process. Soon we will be getting. And uh, we are happy to have you, Dr. Vignesh. And uh, now the floor is yours, please. Uh, respected uh, Dr. Maheshwaran, sir, uh, the senior professor of uh, uh, CPBG, Dr. Nadarajan, sir, and all the distinguished plant builders of uh, TNAU and uh, dear students. I really feel it a great honor to stand before you in this very hall because I am a student of this university. I did my graduation from this place in 2003-7. Later, I had did my master's and PhD from IRA. But definitely, you know, you always have a great affiliation to your alma mater. And that too, for this place, I do have a great affiliation. So, uh, I really thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. So, to begin with, uh, I framed this research title with objective uh, only to summarize the research what my students have done. Although I work broadly on maize biofortification, I narrowed down the topic to a level to show what students can do and how students can contribute actively to the ongoing plant breeding. So, uh, my, uh, my, yeah, the title is Enhanced availability of micronutrients in maize grains through genetic approaches. So yes, we do biofortification, we enhance micronutrients, uh, but the most important part is how to look into its bioavailability and how genetics play a role there. And uh, we do, I, when I say genetic approach, it can encompass plant breeding, conventional breeding, and also your molecular breeding. So broadly, I will be covering three aspects. The first is pro-vitamin A, uh, second is tocopherol, that is vitamin E. The third is uh, in minerals, iron and zinc. The fourth important thing is, I really want to give some uh, some message to students, you know, how uh, they can actively contribute to uh, the system and also how they can develop themselves as a quality researcher. So honestly, my 50% of time I will give my, for my fourth one and uh, only first 25 minutes I will take for my uh, first three topics which I will briefly, you know, update you. Yeah, it all, yes, we know maize uh, has wide diversity and this diversity is only helping us to, uh, you know, be explored for all the nutritional quality traits and specialty traits like as Axicon, etc. The most important thing is always a question comes why to buy a 45 maize because we can see that around 70% goes for feed. But what we have to understand is with the diversification of our food habits towards non vegetarian and maize contributes for around 70% of poultry feed and whatever maize we develop, it has poultry and piggery which in turn will get into our human food chain in terms of egg and meat. So definitely yes, biofortifying maize will get nutrient diet into our food chain through indirect meat. Uh, definitely we do have 20% direct food basket but when we look at the major portion yes it is feed but yes through feed it still comes into our food chain in terms of meat and egg. 
So it all began when I started my PhD, when I was asked to work on carotenoid, there was no clue available. I was told maize has different colors, so you see uh, maize will definitely be having higher beta carotene. So I was asked to profile large number of lines at multi locations. So color is because of lutein and zeaxanthin and not beta carotene and only the beta carotene has a uh, vitamin a activity this lutein and zeaxanthin can give only your antioxidants so we could establish clearly uh, that yes uh, our germplasm has do uh, diversity for color but that color doesn't correspond to your beta carotene it is actually for non pro vitamin a carotenoids and then and there i put the publication not to show what i have as publication only to show to the student how it is important even to document a little information in terms of publication. That is my only intention. I have put the respective pub relevant, the, the related publication of that work down only to show you how documenting the work in terms of publication is important. So I want to make it clear. Yeah. <clears throat> so yes, so we could see that yes, we do not have, our germplasm do not have variability for beta carotene. Yes, even that itself we could publish. Yes, we cannot. The, what does it show is we really need to introduce something from out to enhance the beta carotene Indian maize germplasm. Then the, I had a paper from uh, CIMET uh, through Harvest Plus program where I identified some mutant lines which has uh, high beta carotene. That is actually because of a beta carotene hydroxylase uh, gene that is CRTRB1 which reduces the conversion of beta carotene. So can you have pointer? Oh, fine, no issue. So, yes. Uh, so, uh, yes. So at the time they identified this line, the, some, some had uh, some uh, mutants at SIMMET and that there are those mutants they had high beta carotene you can see of the total carotenoid 81 percent is beta carotene this is again because of a single recessive allele of this hydroxylase gene which reduces the conversion of beta carotene so that you can have higher beta carotene so yes okay we got a clue there is a gene available so there was gene sequence available so that we could design so we got the donors from SIMMET so please what the message is you have to read a lot so when you are working on something, please keep searching for literature. I lost hope. I cannot do because there is no beta carotene. That time I saw this paper. I was told, I showed to my guide, yes, this is there. Then we could write to SIMMET and SIMMET is meant for sh sharing germplasm. Any CG institute, their mandate is to share germplasm. They will be rather happy to share germplasm. So the message what I want to give is, so you have to keep reading. Reading is the key. Reading is the key. Okay. So yes, then we could get the germplasm. Okay, okay, fine, gene is known. Then we, I thought, why can't we look for our own germplasm for this particular allele in our, in our own Indian maize germplasm? Around uh, 400 plus lines I screened and the frequency was very, very low. Okay, that is fine. But though, though, even in the lines which had this favorable allele, they did not had any uh, higher beta carotene. Then we, we, we went for sequencing that part. Then we have seen what is the problem happening over there. Then we could see there is again a polymer, indel polymorphism in the 5' prime UTR region of the gene. This is what I was actually asking for Jiva in the morning. So any any mutations in, in even the UTR regions do contribute for phenotypic variation in the crops. So we had donor from SIMMAT, we had the gene available, we had the we had the gene sequence available, so we could design markers. Then we gone for integration of this gene into some elite popular hybrids. In 2014, we could uh, we published the first paper and we nominated this entry for entry for you know AACRP testing. So after three years of testing, this hybrid got released as a first pro vitamin A hybrid uh, through AACRP. The most important thing is diversification of, you know, we always talk about diversify the germplasm. Yes, we do, uh, we, whenever any gene information available, that too, if it is monogenic or oligogenic, it becomes so easy, we directly go for MABC, but that will not work in the long run. So simultaneously, what we did is, uh, we do practice mark-resisted pedigree breed. Uh, we crossed a similar donor with our own Indian inbreds. From F2, we just picked for those genotypes having the allele of this gene, favorable of this gene. Then further, once the gene was fixed, then we went for selfing. We derived inbred through a pedigree breeding. Thereby, we do develop our own inbreds, but with favorable allele of this particular gene. So with that, we could release a series of hybrids 
for pro vitamin a uh, now even up to 2022 we do had hybrids the most important thing what i want to convey is we always say uh, when we look for any enhancing quality the yield goes down but you see the very first hybrid what we released in 2017 had around 6.5 tons per hectare the latest release what we have in 2022 is having the yield of 8.2 tons per hectare so as a breeder yes we do focus on quality but without yield even the quality will not go so yes that clearly shows we do target gene, but we have to look at the whole plant as a perspective. So now we have a series of hybrids available for pro vitamin A. So like uh, among the different countries working, India do have pro vitamin A rich hybrids in maize. The most important thing is we all know poultry is a major stakeholder. So uh, in, in ICR or in any in our system, we collaborate with people so yes uh, we could collaborate with another ICR institute called Directorate of poultry research where they work on poultry so where we have given uh, this is a normal hybrid this is our own hybrid which is having high pro vitamin a and when they fed into a popular backyard poultry breed called uh, vanaraja they could see that this particular uh, uh, when the when the birds are fed with uh, this particular variety they have better feed conversion ratio that clearly shows even with lesser amount of feed they can have better nutrition so we could establish yes uh, the uh, having pro vitamin a and qpm mice have improved feed efficiency reduced abdominal fat and increased breast breast muscle absorbed when fed with this particular hybrid so uh, and simultaneously uh, through some meeting we could get in touch with a particular scientist from nin he was interested looking our presentation somewhere to uh, test this for bioavailability through in vitro assay in vitro assay then uh, where we could establish that this particular vitamins when enhanced in a, uh, in maize when the birds are fed with it they they do accumulate in the egg yolk and second thing is this around uh, the the ira bred pro vitamin a maize hybrids have around uh, it could meet around 64% of recommended dietary allowance uh, after adjusting to all the losses. So we could establish that yes, they do have significant health effect on poultry bird and also on in the humans. So the most important thing is in 2017, we had our first hybrid, but we could commercialize this hybrid only in the year of 2022. It took really five years for us to convince the companies to license our hybrid. Because what happens is in the beginning, we come up with one in public sector we do not have something called as exclusive licensing we always go for non-exclusivity in licensing so uh, when we had an array of hybrids now we have around seven by 45 hybrids so companies volunteer yes we can have diversity in products between companies so around only in the last year we could license to 12 companies these hybrids uh, so that they can produce and sell the seed and they can all generate a revenue we could generate revenue of around 50 lakhs the most important thing is uh, these hybrids so once we came to, uh, we applied for a funding to dbt through a kisan scheme where they gave this project to popularize this hybrid and when we started this program in jammu and kashmir and northeast now jammu and kashmir government has brought a policy that the 20 percent of maize being produced in the state state should only be biofortified maize it offers is it is due to uh, the scientists to popularize his technology where very often we feel yes i do have publication i do have product even even we were frustrated because we were coming up with series of hybrid which nothing is happening on ground when we go and present somewhere we will they will always ask us what next so we, it could all happen because we could vigorously popularize we could talk about it in multiple forums wherever we got a chance so because of which uh, finally we could I, I, I cannot say we have done much but at least we can say we had a good beginning now where we could license to good number of companies and they are now producing seed for uh, sale so the most important part what i want to convey in the lecture is i 2014 when we uh, it was part of my PhD program and uh, in January I have to join on training in November I harvested so I have to submit thesis so immediately harvest after the harvest I analyze the maize samples for pro vitamin A the beta carotene recorded was 21.5 on the other hand when we are given the same entry for aacrp and in aacrp they test for quality only four months after harvest so we could see after four months the beta got went down to 8.1 ppm this clearly shows during storage this particular nutritional compound gets degraded yes it is true because any carotenoids or any vitamins they are heat and thermolabile so that means this clearly shows the degradation of pro vitamin a the 
I was allotted the first MSc student I was having. Then I gave him a problem that why? Okay, because at that time we were having a series of inbred with pro vitamin A and a series of hybrid with high pro vitamin A. So we gave, we did a very massive experiment. Where we have so we have analyzed, uh, assuming that uh, during the initial period the entire carotene is retained retained in the kernel, and after 30 days, after 60 days, after 90 days, gradually the the degradation starts happening. But we could see that degradation occurs at within three months. That means within three months, around half of the provitamin A is lost. But on the other hand, the hope what we got is among the genotypes we analyzed, there was significant genetic variation even for the retention potential. What does it show is yes, this retention is again governed by some genetic factors. That means again for a breeder, now yes, I can move one step further and I can explore what can be done next to 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 reduce the degradation. So when these genotypes, when we have seen that some genotype having even 28 percent retention and some having only 8 percent, and there is a there is a clear cut genetic. This this uh, for sake of time, I am showing only one graph from this paper. It was a massive experiment, but just to make it very brief, uh, with one graph I am showing that. So the, we got a hope. Yes, there is genetic variation even for the retention of carotenoids. So this uh, he was my second MSc student who published this in uh, Journal of Cereal Science. And simultaneously, I told uh, why can't we analyze the hybrids as well? So the same study we have done, and we could establish there also that yes, we do have genetic variation for the retention. Some hope there are some genotype which can still have better pro A even after storage. So having understood. There are some genetic factors. That means there could be some gene which is acting on it. So what is that? So then we went on. You know, we selected the contrasting inbred having extremely um, extreme retention potential, and we gone for validation of an array of genes like LOX, CCD1, OR gene, like multiple genes we validated, of which we could clearly see. Uh, you know, in the beginning they had high 100% retention. Gradually. One particular genotype could retain more pro A, another could uh, retain very less, and the, the, simultaneously the expression pattern of this uh, dioxygenase gene, that is carotenoid cleavage dioxygenase gene, could correspond uh, to exactly the retention, uh, you know, uh, the pattern of retention in the grain. So then we could clearly establish that uh, through multiple experiment, even through copy number study, that the CCD1, uh, the lower expression of CCD1 could contribute for higher retention. So now we are in the process of looking for either null or a favorable allele which can contribute for uh, reducing the, that is increasing the retention, so that we can have this as a next target. To in to in to introgress in the pro A rich hybrid. That means we will have CRTRB1 in the background with have for high pro A. Not only that is sufficient. To we should always look for a null or a favorable allele of CCD1. But we can combine them also to retain uh, pro A even after the longer duration of storage, which we could again publish in you know molecular genetics and uh, genomics. <coughs> and then the another vitamin is tocopherol. You know we all know. Uh, tocopherol is important for neurological function. Even in the poultry birds, it is very uh, well established. There is again a gene called uh, uh, ZM BTE4. So we targeted this gene when the information was available. Then we gone for introducing this allele, and we could come up with hybrids having higher tocopherol. And uh, this hybrid was, uh, you know, uh, we nominated for ACRP testing only in the last ACRP meeting. Uh, we got it identified. Now it is yet to be released through CVRC. We are in the process of preparing. So now uh, we do have hybrids with tocopherol, but again the same problem we faced uh, while storing this hybrid. There was even again a significant reduction of you know alpha tocopherol, that is vitamin E. So what happened is again the similar type of study because now uh, we are in the process of combining QPM, pro vitamin E, tocopherols. So we have to put multiple nutrients together while combining. Nutrients together, we have to see how they interact between them. And second thing is, we have to look for some other factors which can either enhance or reduce their, uh, I could say, which can enhance their uh, bioavailability or it can reduce their uh, degradation during uh, storage. So again, uh, through one of my, she is my sixth semester student, Shalma. Then I, she was given the problem because our inputs were ready only by 2020. Then she could start this work. And uh, we could again clearly see in this case uh, we had other trend uh, where you know initially they were stable, but only in the latter part of 
at the story there was severe degradation and we could see again a genetic variation and finally there then we could see uh, probably locks are the most you know uh, potential candidate gene which basically acts upon this uh, fat soluble vitamins so there were around 13 isoforms of locks and uh, we could finally validate this a locks 3 for uh, uh, you know uh, which uh, actually causes uh, through higher lipoxygenase activity the degradation of this uh, tocopherols so uh, on a wild thought we thought uh, okay the these nutrients when stored lost so why can't we try to enhance this in a perishable product like sweet corn which we naturally also store under refrigerated conditions because so we naturally store them under freezing condition for marketing or uh, it is either or uh, it is consumed fresh so uh, so then we made an attempt uh, to biofortify the sweet corn hybrids as well and uh, this was done by uh, two of our phd students uh, one by prajesh he is scientist at jansi and uh, he is she is anchal uh, she is she did phd with us so uh, we could uh, we could even biofortify sweet corn the most important thing thought was okay we are uh, working on uh, mm, uh, reducing the degradation but why can't we look for enhancing his bioavailability through breeding for some bioavailability promoting factors like we all know vitamin a and vitamin e are fat soluble vitamins that means when we increase the amount of oil in the kernel definitely they will contribute for uh, the en enhancing the bioavailability of these vitamins but the problem is once you enhance the oil you are inviting rancidity so you have to set a set a mark not to increase too much but to increase to a level at least the bioavailability can be enhanced so then uh, most important thing is in poultry feed uh, around 60% they use maize and 40% they use soybean because uh, maize is being fed to poultry and piggery in piggery the body weight gain is most important economic trait uh, what does it show is so they so they feed soybean so that the the piglets can enhance the weight uh, rapidly so we thought with two objectives so to enhance oil uh, one to enhance the availability of vitamin a in the maize based diet second thing is it will also provide high energy diet to the poultry and piggery because you know in broiler the rapid growth of the poultry bird is important to to harness the maximum potential whereas in piggery the body weight gain in the in the piglet is important so then we started then how to proceed with it then we looked into oil biosynthesis pathway this was again done by one of my he is my first phd student ashwin katral and uh, we explored uh, the the pathway then we could see one particular gene that is diacyl glycerol acyl transferase this could cause there is one qtl reported that could contribute for uh, to as high as 40% enhancement of oil and there are other genes like giant embryo wrinkled one and fat b so we formulated a program for sp what happens in actually in each of these four genes and which gene to target and by targeting which gene we can go for enhancement of oil and the first study what we did like we all know oil gets accumulated in the embryo so we thought why can't we first study how embryo behaves so uh, we we in the breeding program you know whenever we make cross we store them in our Story. so we was we screen lot of lines and we identified some having a uh, very large sized embryo and some having very extremely large sized embryo so and we could uh, and we cross them we we at least likewise we made three different crosses using three diverse uh, small embryo and large embryo line and we through a six generation based again uh, generation mean analysis uh, analysis uh, we we three crosses for six generations we avoided three locations this is exclusively only a data on this is exclusively only a data on embryo initially we were phenotyping for large number of traits of late we have seen what are the traits for which no publications has been made because you know we do take large volume of data at the end the data should gets translated in form of publication so if you duplicate the information available you know yourself will get bored i cannot make it a publication so uh, we made a sincere attempt this paper we wrote almost for around 8 months then finally uh, we could establish genetics of this trait and this this publication only the field uh, based evaluation of generation mean analysis only six generation of three location we could publish in plant physiology and biochemistry because the trait was novel and second thing is story considering the available literature so we could uh, make a publication out of it. 
So uh, now having uh, DGAT1, we established the role of DGAT1. Uh, we had sequence information, so we designed markers. So then we went on to intro. And uh, in the meantime, what happened is I was looking for high oil lines. So we, we all know very well Illinois long term. Uh, selection experiment so they do offer free service they do provide lines uh, to to any to any researchers so i wrote to them the stephen moose was there he was kind enough he said you can contact usda then i wrote to usda they were kind enough to share the lines and uh, using those lines which are having very large embryo in their breeding program now they have attained up to 27 percent of oil but those grains have only embryo there is no star endosperm the very less endosperm so very less uh, starch so that the grains will get rancid at one part second thing is the problems comes with germination and establishment so our target is only to look for enhancement up to in the normal maize has around 3.5 to 4 percent what we are looking was is only to enhance up to say six to seven percent because our, our, our objective is uh, to replace, uh, to give an soybean uh, in, in, in poultry and to enhance the bioavailability of this uh, nutrients. So uh, these lines which are having this DG81, uh, DG81 could have uh, enhancement of oil. The normal lines they have around 4.5% uh, uh, of uh, oil where you can see the DG81 based lines which we developed through uh, in our breeding program. They could have around, uh, around 25 to 40% enhancement of oil. Oil, we thought uh, we had another G called uh, fat beta iosterase. So in the meantime, we also uh, looked for altering the fatty acid profile in the because you know when you start a work, uh, you do get lot of leads as offshoot. So we try to incorporate them just to add value to the ongoing work. So like it, 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 it when you have to value at your work in between because you have to keep your major objectives intact. But when you get something new late, try to put in put in put in it so that you can really value it and you can be in the timeline to make a good publication out of it. And uh, the next comes, you know, uh, the phytic acid. Actually, what happened is we tried a lot to breed for iron and zinc. We tried through there are some QTLs, it didn't work. We tried through multiple layered aluron multiple aluron layer genotypes. We could not even phenotype for multiple aluron layers. So we will hope how to proceed with this. Then, uh, yes, we thought, OK, uh, uh, we started understanding what happens in this uh, phytic acid pathway. Then, uh, uh, you know, in a normal ppm iron, even through any breeding mean, if you, if you enhance it to uh, 60 ppm, but at the end, only 5% of them will be available in the diet. You will get only 3 ppm. On the other hand, you with the same 30 ppm of uh, 30 ppm of uh, iron as a base genotype if you reduce the phytic acid you are enhancing the bioavailability at the end you are going to realize the the same level of iron in the diet the the, the message here is directly enhancing iron they are governed by polygenes and the environmental effect is really too high even when we harvest i wear gloves and we harvest even if the labor keeps the cob down in the soil it gets contaminated it will give an abrupt value of iron and zinc uh, not even once i got a consistent data for iron and zinc in the genotypes in multiple locations so we were very clear the g by e is too high so i cannot have a false hope of directly enhancing through the available genes and Q the qtls so uh, i wrote to dr victor raboy uh, who is uh, the father of low fated breeding and again that time he was retiring from usda and that he was at the verge of retirement so i was lucky enough uh, he, he wrote to me you wrote to me at the right time that uh, after some months i cannot give you so immediately he sent to me and uh, he shared with me and uh, honestly he was contacting through mails about the to know the progress of my work so the, the message is you know often what happens is we do search for papers and we don't get them. We go to Sci-Hub, we put the link and we look for the paper. If you do not get, just with the abstract, we make a story in the review of literature, we end the story. Okay, this may look simple in the beginning. But you know, you, you if you start concerned author, you will get two benefits out of it. Number one, any scientist, you know, we do scientists, we do have some sort of, I should not say ego, we do look for you see, my work should get recognized, right? So if you write into some scientist, he will really feel elated. He will be happy to share you the literatures. Second thing is, he will be in the link, he will be sharing you multiple literatures. And third thing what happens is, once he will be, he may or may not follow up your work. At the end, once you complete your work, if you make a manuscript, if you send it to your journal, he could be the potential reviewer of your manuscript. 
often it happens because you are writing to someone who has worked so long in an area that i always do and i have realized this at multiple po point of time uh, we do contact people from simat or from any cg institute or even in the universities at us we contact them they send literature they do send multiple papers to us and finally we do give them as reviewers or it goes to them by the virtue of similarity in work so definitely he will also would be happy to promote your work because his paper is cited second thing is his relevant area of research research is getting highlighted so you see everything is interconnected at the end okay so please develop the habit of writing to the authors because whenever you get an you do not get a full length article of a paper in online you will definitely get the abstract along with the contact details just founding author he will be the happiest person on that day to send you the manuscript because he will feel so good if yes, someone is recognizing me so please do that this i tell all my students i say don't go to sahib don't write to anyone in your don't write to your friend in us so that he can some of you see me doing post doc there you will be writing to them they will be sending you the same thing you just write to the concerned corresponding author he will help you in multiple ways okay please do this this is the what experience i understood with my short 12 years of you know experience i should say so uh, in the simultaneously there was an information available that uh, simultaneously there was a leak that uh, lysine and proe do enhance the bioavailability of iron and uh, zinc so we thought we do have proe as genotype we do have low fighted mutants why can't we combine them and see so uh, and in the beginning we first developed okay. Uh, so we do uh, first as a part of it we design primers we design markers for the gene because we do got donors and uh, uh, because once you get the donor you have to start interrogation for which you need markers for selection so first, first uh, ms student who is now a scientist at ira assam and uh, we could uh, publish this and then we cross this donor with multiple array of lines in the in our breeding program and we did intensive selection this again this work i gave to my or my one of my ms student then we we could see that we developed an array of low phytate lines which also has good agronomic performance as you could see from the uh, from the image and which we could publish uh, in in one of the crop and pasture science the most important thing is so we do have designation of genetics and plant breeding yes i am a plant breeder i have to develop varieties that is my mandate i still have a word genetics attached to it so i should not lose that touch of uh, genetics and the basic research from my uh, my my research endeavors so we do whatever program we give we ensure that the lines are developed out of it on one side simultaneously we also focus on development and how who worked on that particular topic when the hybrids are released they also become part of that variety or hybrid we i do that very we do that very religiously so uh, this hybrid is in now we have a low fighted maize hybrid uh, simultaneously for lp2 in thing and this we could you know plant breeding and uh, so now if you see the performance of these two hybrids in uh, in in the acrp trial we could see the lpa low phytate hybrids do performed well in our avt1 trial uh, over the checks so now uh, we are there in avt2 now we are in the process of uh, promoting this hybrids in our next uh, uh, commercialization uh, pipeline so this is what i just want to give an uh, overview of what actually we do in our biofort no, no, this is not about the entire work of our biofortification program Uh, whatever i have shown to you is all uh, from on, only from my students research program so we developed some lpo and lpo2 lines then i thought why can't we see what happens when we combine them together so we had isogenic lines for lpo1 and 2 this i gave to another phd student to just to make a cross between these two nils and see in f2 look for double homozygote and you see what happens when we put these two genes you know together so we could clearly see that you know it is lp uh, there are three different genes it is lpa1 which could ha uh, which can cause higher decrease of phytic acid lpa2 could ha could reduce only 30% whereas when you combine them still there was no much effect of uh, combining these two alleles so use of lpa1 alone is no sufficient to go for reduction of phytic acid now low phytate lines we have they are all basically uh, lpa1 uh, low phytate lines like uh, yeah this is what i i uh, sorry uh, this is what i just want to give a outline of what we work on uh, the retention of uh, bioavailability of nutrients in 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 uh, in our maize breeding program uh, 
honestly my intention of uh, coming here to present before the students was to talk about something uh, what actually you should focus you know uh, you may think i may not be too mature enough to talk these things even with my little experience what i have seen with students doing else fair at ira or tnau uh, because i do get thesis from many universities i do go for evaluation of question papers like why was qualifying stuff and everything so the what difference what i realized between the two, the two section of students one who work a lot who are listen to whatever their guides say but the problem is they will listen only to whatever their guides say they will not think beyond it and they will work do lot of work they will prepare n number of tables at the end when we look at their publication they lag because they get lost among all the tables on the other hand there are certain group of students who doesn't work who are smart enough just do little work get degree and go see both will not work in long run because uh, there are a lot of seniors here i they may differ I, i just want to say for those who are beginning their career that who are at the first of first and second year of your phd i i really reiterate these four p's are very very important in your career to to lead a successful professional life the very first thing is publication many may differ with me but still as of now globally in any scale publication is considered the most important criteria to judge what a scientist is because i am not going to read thesis of anyone no one is going to get access of your thesis so every anyone will get to know about vignesh or bharati or pooja i am just taking the names of whom sir i know so they will get to know about them only by sir so what publication comes in google scholar so even for me our uh, vacation sir looked in google scholar and he was telling how many publications i have yes that is the reality okay so yes this is the very important thing then come projects to get projects you need publications you write to any funding agency it will go to someone for evaluation and again the evaluator sitting there will first whether the scientist is capable of running that project or not and the capability of a scientist is known by what is the previous work he has done the previous work he has done can be reflected only in the form of publications and nothing else because he cannot sit and look for your thesis to know who oh, he has done so much of work right he cannot do no one will do for that matter so these two are important and the third thing is product yes we are breeders for us at the end what gives satisfaction is our product and you know uh, having good publications and projects will lead to diversify your domain of product development yes routinely we do many things but still you can add some value to your ongoing breeding work that comes with this and, and if you have all these three definitely peer recognition comes on its own and i i have put two points here they are highly interconnected yes it is true they are highly interconnected because having one will definitely lead to getting other because if you have to get any award i i have seen the circulation of uh, isdb awards as well being a life member i do get the mail i have seen even it is it is requested there how much publications you have okay your ogp is being asked for that is one part beyond that what you have done what publications you have also matters so starting from the society award to any national academy award first what they will see is publication so it has it has relevant to your peer recognition but in the beginning of my career as a youngster publication alone may do gradually they will ask in what area you are working for which you have to have some projects to show yes i am working on that area so the third most important thing is as a breeder okay fine you got good number of publications what varieties you have so it is only the people responsibilities i face we face this often in our review meetings Uh, because dr manomani madam comes for all our crp meetings at john soil sir sendil sir they all come so we, at the end we face this question so what product you have with you so these three are important and you take these three are being asked for so i i remain all the youngsters here those who are students you please ensure you are starting as early as the first part of it so i just have what i observed from my students i have some points to make the very first thing is the very what to is very important is being in the timeline because you know i when i have given a point better to be ahead of your guide you know why i wrote this is for for you doing only your phd title and objective is sufficient so you will be giving your entire time and energy in thinking and executing your phd research topic but for a guide he has to take class he will be having multiple students he will be having multiple administrative activities like you know multiple things will come to their place so you will become one of the activity of a guide 
but for you this is the only activity what does it show is yes you have to be even ahead of your guide it, it should be other way around it is you who has to take paper and go to search for literature read and go to your guide and tell yeah this has come can we do this so unless you inculcate this habit because at the end i have seen students easily putting blame on the guide a madam paper illa thevilla sir thesis mudike varilla see why 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 would they it is your thesis right and it is if, if at all a guide only has to give you the research idea then it is you are going to have the degree of phd not your research guide they already got their degree we all already got our degrees right so please make it a habit you have to read it is you who has to go to your guide and tell if something new has come and can we do this and this is very important to be in the timeline because the world is moving fast the way the people are making publication by the time you do and execute something by the time you finish someone would have published it okay so it is you who has to be ahead to make it happen second thing is timely compilation what i have seen is na crop potain data edutha adutha crop poda poren so fine ning crop potinga data eduthinga adutha crop poda poren you have still some gap in between right so have you really made a table out of your data so that is very important i i never allow my student to grow the next crop unless he gives me the table of the pre the previous season because i know i have not taken data he only has taken data if i am not asking from him he will forget himself half of the time they will get lost what it is so you have to timely compile so this is timely compilation and there is another important point is often you all send abstracts for conferences you do make posters right so even while making posters try to make tables in such a way those tables you can use later part to make it as a research paper because in abstract in, in a poster you just put shabby things where you feel poster yaar pak right with that attitude we just put things and go for poster and uh, you know uh, had you put some time in making a table and pasting there half of the time would have been saved later which you would have used for making a paper out of it. you know everything comes with a cumulative effort after 3 years you cannot sit and see the 100 page table and you know make some sense out of it and make a manuscript you have to plan in the back of your mind whatever data comes what can i do what can i do and what can i do because don't expect your guide will tell you yes bharati you have to do this pooja you have to do this it is you who has to think what i can do uh, what need to be done will be told only for ms students for phd or independent researcher so you have to be so if you at all you want to have successful phd and third thing is documentation be it big or small often sometimes we feel idhiley uh, publish pananum and sometimes uh, we feel i am uh, wait panuva unless i get all table to make a big paper so it cannot happen like this multiple tables added over years will make a manuscript i am sure many of you will be doing this i am just telling for those who are beginning their phd career to make it a habit because i will show the next slide i do struggle with my students students i will show with the data yesterday night i was preparing that so that is the third thing the fourth important thing is please connect with related researchers whatever if you suppose you are working on low phytic acid there are four five people globally they will be working on that area you will be referring to their paper just write a mail to them that i read this paper if you have a new paper you just write you know we are good at doing all that right so you can you can happily do that if you do that he will be remembering you And, and and let me tell you very frankly they could be the potential reviewer of your manuscripts in international journals because you will be sending to springer or elsewhere they will be looking for reviewer they will sitting over there will look for related research just to send your manuscript and naturally he will get only those people am i right so and he by the virtue of having a prior information about your interest and your activities and he will definitely have i am not telling this will happen certainly but there is a good chance that these things do happen so uh, you know please uh, uh, connect it with uh, you try to connect with the related researchers the fourth imp- the fifth important thing is persistent efforts see what i have seen recently even with my student is we have lost the habit of accepting the rejection of a manuscript yes when i sent a paper i should get acceptance third day irrespective of it i pay it irrespective of i i, I know the editor in whatever means like what does it show is we have gradually we are losing the habit of accepting the rejections friends you know earlier you develop this habit of accepting rejection it is good for your scientific career you talk to any people who has good number of publications they all might have they subjected their paper to at least seven six journals and finally got their papers published 
so don't think i send today tomorrow i will get acceptance you know this is what happens and only this habit has led to this confusion of to go for either open access or subscription based journals because you know what happens is you will not start early the third year you will come to a guide uh, ars exam varudeng madam kalyan aagano valaik pono like i have multiple problem kadasi la vandha thesis mudikano there will be some emotional black mailings at the end we are also god fearing human beings yen valaki idu pananum guide ku thonum so what happens is at the end uh, instead of you not starting early you will say you will force the guy to make some publication in open access journals yen affordable guide can do that let's do that so the affordable guide will send it to frontiers or plus or scientific reports he will get it published what about those either non affordable guides or non interested guides like me i never promote this publishing in open access and so i i never encourage it so all my students have that problem with me but i tell you have to have patience so since you are not starting early you have to spend later and there are many students who are ready to pay from their packet and get it published and go so the problem is you may feel that day you got publication three years of effort in making a paper at the end you are just making it just a piece of sheet by paying somewhere and after three years when you sit in an interview you will be definitely you know by looking into your manuscript it will reflect your scientific temperament okay so all your hard work you have put yourself by making such rapid public in a in a non respected i should not say respected i should say like yeah yes yes they are not being considered mostly so please friends you have to start early those who are in at least second year phd you think what should i write because you all know you need a paper to submit thesis it is nothing new ungalku uh, third year la solla paper venu unta when you join phd in the brochure it was written you should have a paper to get your thesis what is it that means you should be prepared like you there is no point in coming to guide at third year and telling oh please i need a paper kalyana uh, like you have multiple problems it is true i do i do have problem i did had a problem it doesn't mean that i can go for such emotional things because such things make you short term happiness but in the long term you will definitely feel lost you will regret yourself why i did so so please start early this this is the very important point i want to tell you explore journals we often uh, you know we just in the nalan journal irukka adu adichu povum you know you first see on google uh, the best way to explore is whatever is you know literatures you are using for your your uh, your uh, thesis you make a list of journals they have been published okay you are having a list of references parallelly you make list of journals in which i references so now these uh, these journals are your potential journals to communicate your manuscript so there is nothing no big you know idea here it's all only you have to put more of your smartness and you know and see yes you know because you, we all think okay here we can send or to ijgpb or to plant breeding or you fight take or frontiers yes, but there are n number of journals in uh, plant breeding so you have to explore journals and the most important thing is when you explore journal they do have lot of special issues and special issues are something is like a special train திருப்பதி போற ட்ரெயின்ல திருப்பதி போறவங்க கூட தான் ஏறுவாங்க சோ லைக் வைஸ் இஃப் யூ ஹேவ் ஸ்பெஷல் இஷ்யூ ஆஃப் ஜெர்னல் ஒர்க் ஃபார் ஓன்லி ஃபார் ட்ரௌட் டாலரன்ஸ் எடிட்டர் வில் பி ஹேவிங் சம் டெர்த் ஆஃப் மேனஸ்கிரிப்ட் ரைட் சோ யூ கேன் ஃபிட் யுவர் செல்ஃப் பெஸ்ட் இன் டு தட் பர்டிகுலர் ஸ்பெஷல் இஷ்யூ பட் வாட் இஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன் இஸ் யூ ஹவ் டு கீப் எக்ஸ்ப்ளோரிங் ஓகே யூ டூ சி மொபைல் பட் சம்டைம்ஸ் சி சச் திங்ஸ் ஆஸ் வெல் வென் ப்ரௌசிங் யூ ப்ரௌஸ் ஃபார் சர்டன் திங்ஸ் யூ நோ ஜஸ்ட் லுக் இன் டு ஜெர்னல்ஸ் யூ எக்ஸ்ப்ளோர் தெம் what are the special issues available whether i can if fit into it if you can fit into it just make a draft ready and submit so that the, on the one hand editor is looking for a article for special issue on the other hand you are working in the related area it's a win win situation avangalukku article venum ungalukku article venum right so but this will you will get to do some homework to do this this you don't expect a guide will tell you and the problem is you will expect everything guide will tell you as if that it is it is the guide's thesis absolutely not okay the so guiding I, i always say this statement very rather ruthlessly guiding students is only a part of our job and that to as far as phd is concerned the self thinking and self execution and self writing is very very important to be yourself an independent researcher after 10 years you will be sitting in the front row and you will be teaching students unless you develop that independence that's what i got from my guide so you will not do this as the latter part of your you know career so please do i just i'm 
there could be n many avenues to do this whatever i am writing here is whatever little experience i faced in guiding around 10 11 students so far and the very last is pursue with passion after plan building with some purpose right uh, indeed very tough to get into with great difficulty you got into and you 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 have the passion to be continued kandipa ninga nanacha guide kadaikka matanga nanacha crop kadaikka matanga it doesn't matter right you are going in phd in plant breeding and genetics not in phd in maize breeding or phd in rice breeding so yes i worked for my maize uh, msc in i wanted a rice in msc i got brassica i wanted again a rice in uh, phd but somehow i got inclined towards maize because i thought work in a different uh, mode of reproduction plant i thought okay i should get into maize so like yeah I, even i didn't got the the got the you know thing of my choice but still the system has to run right so please pursue with passion so i uh, when i was making this point i thought why should not i make a case study with all my students who have guided so far yesterday night i was sitting this while well, coming from delhi in the aircraft i was just sitting and come so i have guided you know for my msc students they all joined say say someone joined in 2016 he completed in 2018 again it took one year for him to write a paper and give it to me so by the time he joined with some other guide as a phd but yes i have to be behind him literally that yes please write them out because i was also a beginner a scientist i do need my publication i have put lot of my energy into the story so i pursued so we communicated that to totally you know four journals it took 8.5 months to get it accepted it took 8.5 months time so if you look uh, the same the similarity is the trend with all the msc students they all took literally one year time and this one year time is justified in msc student because uh, either you have to write on your own or you have to make them write i wanted to make them write because they can write here after in their life continuously so i made them to write so all of them i they bring i give corrections i present them back sometimes they agitated sometimes like all dramas happen they cry they like sometimes i say you have to do i they scold me i scold them all that happens but at the end i tell don't worry things will materialize one day and you know my first student he took 8.5 months time he could publish in you know he, he could publish with 2.8 impact the most interesting part was my second student you know they do join together with me i got two msc together we could make four papers out of his thesis because i was doing then multiple leads was coming i was putting them you do you do you do then fortunately he was doing he was bringing lot of data i know that time it was like my family was in i we were in family way my wife was in village i was all alone there oh i thought it is a good time then we compiled all data we analyzed in multiple ways then finally we could make out four paper the very first paper it took 12 months exactly At, at, i think we communicated to four journal and one day he told sir i will pay myself and publish but i want a paper him i said nothing doing you have to wait <clears throat> and and finally we could make four paper but if you see the number of journals we communicated it varies it took to even, even up to one year to get it accepted the third interesting was uh, my, you know the manoj gowda uh, for him it was like it was a part of another student's thesis from a dbt project so it has to go combinedly with another uh, my mentor dr feroz so we have to make it so it was communicated to frontiers in plans even there it took uh, you know we started with some other journal it finally went we had a compulsion of submitting the psc student's thesis uh, so but uh, i will tell you how we avoid paying to the journal i will come to it later the the fourth important thing is saikat pal he worked on male serial baby corn surprisingly i communicated to the journal within 3 i got the acceptance directly without any revision so then i i went into the editorial role the finally when the communication script went to editor who works on maize and who had historically worked on the cm tc sorry tc cytoplasm of maize so sometimes we do not know you know to whom it goes that means we have to give a try even we didn't expect it will go to him he was so happy to see uh, that now everyone forgot male serility now we started using that for baby corn so when we when we wrote the paper we sent even from ufa to with any revision we got this you know uh, paper uh, you know accepted this is a very important thing i want to tell you the pending one you know he had two manuscripts he unfortunately didn't get phd in iri he left for uh, telangana to do phd i was telling him you please send the manuscript send the manuscript he took one year to send me the manuscript by the time he sent me i got another manuscript 
ஓகே இன்னும் அனதர் ஸ்டூடெண்ட் இன் பிளேஸ் ஸோ நான் நமக்கு எல்லாம் தெரியும் வாயு உள்ள புள்ள தான் பால் குடி லைக் அழுத புள்ள தான் பால் குடிக்கும் சொல்ற மாதிரி த ஸ்டூடெண்ட் இஸ் நாட் இன் ஃப்ரண்ட் ஆஃப் மீ ஹி இஸ் ஜஸ்ட் கம்யூனிகேட்டிங் த்ரூ மெயில் ஸோ பட் தேர் இஸ் சம்மன் சிட்டிங் இன் ஃப்ரண்ட் ஆஃப் மீ டு யூனோ கமிங் அண்ட் ஆஸ்கிங் மீ ஃபார் பப்ளிகேஷன் ஸோ டெஃபினட் ஐ வில் கிவ் மோர் டைம் டு தட் ரைட் ஸோ ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் யூ பிளீஸ் ரிமெம்பர் டோன்ட் திங்க் ஐ வில் கம்ப்ளீட் அண்ட் கோ மை கைட் இஸ் வெரி குட் வித் மீ வி ஆர் வெரி குட் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் ஆல் தட் வில் நாட் ஒர்க் ஆஃப்டர் லீவிங் ஓகே யூ யூ ஆர் யூ ஆர் வி டூ ஷேர் குட் ரிலேஷன் human being that will not work in long run because your guide will get another student in the same position someone will replace am i right so you please keep still this paper i could not it has been written the draft is ready i could not sit and see the draft and he calls once in six months or on the paper enna chu saikath i think pooja knows so like uh, then now it, it is like i don't know whether i can make it out or not so the only message i want to what i want to give is so be in the timeline don't think na panittu ponaalo en guide panni kuduthuruvaanga mail la oh it cannot happen it simply it cannot happen uh, it, it, the priority changes with time even maybe after 5 years even my interest towards my time go towards publication may go down my i may increase my time towards popularization the, the, everything is with with time it is connected the and you know uh, the another student is shridhar ragi uh, this is the, again the victor raboy story uh, we could communicate it to science and plan reading we could get acceptance like it took time but it was within the first attempt we could get published and you know the very happiest thing was uh, dr reboy was like he is retired now he cannot access much of internet some of you could see in his uh, link that yes it can it is published so he wrote to me please share the paper with me so after that, you know long mail to me was this you should have done this then he gave a lead to me like what can be done next so then comes my phd students now for the problem with phd come and you will get some fellowship for 5 years you will think at anjosh sir 35000 pana varunt at the end you are losing 2 years of your life sufficient for phd so now he thought i will complete but half late he realized he is not in the time when i said in phd i will not my my habit is i will just see my student is in lab or not in field or not otherwise i never i don't even talk to them i just tell if you have any problem come to me otherwise you do what you want to do the problem is if i start standing behind them they will develop habit of i will do only what he says i told you you have to bring two papers to me for submitting thesis you have to bring the chapters to me for correct the thesis and i will submit but i cannot sit and write and i cannot help you in getting a paper as far as phd is because my guide told me be independent so i thought i should inculcate in it so now uh, fortunately these two guys they they had a start but very late uh, finally they could make out publications they are they why why scheduled on monday and tuesday i think they will be getting their uh, phd the problem is this covid batch students i know they all came very late uh, parameshwaran is yet to come uh, he said uh, he may board train tomorrow he said sir i will try to come and uh, ganesh is there he is working the problem is he had all his classes online so even we have difficulty in communicating the science how to do so like yeah so uh, the, finally the what the message i want to give is uh, friends many may tell you publications are not important like paper ledi enna panna poringa andal so please keep in mind even when you fill the application for assistant professor they will ask for publications if you apply for post doc they will ask for publication even when you apply for any post they will ask for publication so please develop the habit of reading develop the habit of early writing so that you can be in the timeline because time will favor the one who are all moving in the time zone okay so just you know this i want to share because i was making this then i thought why can't i make a case study with my own experience so this i could make yesterday night uh, with the help of my student i just thought i should make it it took long time for me to compile because i had to open every folder and see what happened in this so it took uh, significant uh, this i took half of the time in preparing the entire uh, presentation but still i thought i should make some meaning you see it took as i yes 15 months even with less than 2 months also we published a paper on the other hand there are cases even we had communication to seven journals so like it happens yes we have to accept it but for the previous six uh, rejections you have to develop the habit oh rejects rejections nadakum rejections is a part of your manuscript writing but considering that don't stop yourself communicate to you fit you 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 always keep in mind you will communicate whatever the paper is only more than two impact the two advantage your paper may get rejected if you send to springer they will send immediately if you send to elsewhere it will go for review your paper will get rejected by some scientist so your paper is getting improved at free of cost so why are you losing that opportunity you know try to explore all the possible 
you know you have you know just uh, i just want to share with whatever you know experience i have i had so far so yeah with this i sincerely thank uh, my institute and uh, our uh, coordinating center and we do have collaboration with all aes tnau i have with ravikeshan sir sendil sir from uh, cpmb and john joel sir and all the acrp scientists from uh, mais dr uh, shokumar sir and kumari vinodana madam and mais research center at vagai dr selo illa we do conduct trial we do get donors uh, we get donors from multiple agencies and uh, from uh, funding agencies he is uh, my mentor dr firoz who is our pa there in mais he is my another colleague and to all the so staff of my program importantly students presentation what i have shown you is exclusively the work done by my uh, students so this so a significant you know thanks goes to them so you know standing at that this podium uh, it will be injustice if i did not mention uh, these three people you know uh, this is very important for me because at rani rajan i joined for my bsc in 2003 uh, fundamentals of crop botany principles of genetics uh, principles of plant breeding he took three courses like what not every class at the end he calls us to write in the board genetic ratios even when uh, all our classmates meet people ask uh, and sir engada eppadra irukkaru kudu elu solvare board la so this is what like he just makes us to read to read and read and he took lot of jrf classes and in each class he made us to learn a lot about what comes in because uh, like i was just told by jaimani man they all got airs together since they had an exposure of national exam so he he used to tell in the question varla and the question varla suppose while teaching rice botany he will write down nrra katak say crra katak now nrra drr hyderabad irri philippines so like he put national is this is center of origin like all this sort of jrf questions he put in place so like you know you are getting ready made information available for your you know so i really do a lot to him because he really makes us to read for uh, genetics and to dr babu uh, who participated in plant breeding course for practical and for further two course the significant thing is sir took us to respective crop unit for rice uh, we went to manonmani ma'am i still remember all the names and for uh, sorgham ganesh muthi sir took class for for uh, pgnp kalimagal ma'am took class for forage dr vijay kumar sir took class for oil seeds dr manivanan sir that time was there he used dr uh, who was director gujunahat uh, dr s manivanan sir i think he took class so he used to take us to respective crop breeders he used to leave us there for two and a half hours like so you are getting first hand information of everything from a crop breeder you imagine a scientist reading about a rice breeder reading about maize and taking class on the other hand a rice breeder taking into a maize breeder and leaving it to him to take class so i for maize armu chami sir i yes dr armu chami sir was there he took my maize class so i am telling this because you know this is a, this is a unique system of tea no you we do not have anything anywhere in any university so say taking going to a particular crop and listening to the breeder and the most important thing is uh, i i always uh, say with vijay kumar sir of forage crops while taking lucerne he told and we one ukaru and the flower open aho is our tipping and that question was in our jrf exam and that word was in none of the books that time i let me tell you like i was surprised you know how such small small interventions will help you and i and this all happened because i am sure babu sir would not have known that time crop breeder can definitely tell you better so i really owe a lot to both of them because the, all the orientation the preparation the my my uh, i think i should say all the enthu i got into breeding is because of uh, both of them i really owe a lot to them so i i should remember them today because i am standing Department. and to my sharan sir because i got a trade i there is a, it is a mandate to have three months attachment training uh, to with a mentor at uh, at a place so i did my master i since i did not have my masters from here so i had a liberty of choosing tnau even without talking to sir i told want to go to dr maheshwaran so sir is well known to everyone there so they really agreed i, I was here the good thing with sir was sir allowed me to i came here i so i told sir me i would me na jail run panna maten na lab lo panna maten i can go to field or i can he said why can't you take class so in this very hall i was uh, population genetics and quantitative genetics to that batch of students uh, in 2013 and it is because of maheshwaran sir i got an official attachment with cpbg because i do have a certificate that i got trained in cpbg so i i i i really respect it a lot so my sincere thanks to him and the very big thanks is because 
the my when i was doing my phd my aim was to become assistant professor here and to teach bsc agri students in undergraduate botany lab i don't know why i love that lab so much like i i cannot say how, how much i love that lab because one reason sir has made so much impact on me for that lab and uh, i was scientist over there and uh, the assistant professor application call for came and i called sir what should i do he said why do you want to come here i said like i want to do teaching are you sure you will be having teaching opportunity throughout if you are here i said no are you sure you can you can come here and uh, get assistant like there are, like he was guiding me like a very very uh, as a fatherly figure he was guiding me like uh, vignesh what should you do uh, considering your research interest so i really owe a lot to him for uh, for really guiding me uh, from that place so uh, some persons to mention because i am in a part of core teaching there because i do continue to teach only in blackboard even in covid i am teaching in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a smart board so like uh, dr ramasam sir from agronomy and lakshmanan sir and mahendran sir these three people did me lot in taking classes the way the three people took i imbibed all of their qualities i i try to i since try to follow i don't know how much i am following and uh, dr gokula devi and kumuda played important role in teaching the respective subject in for me jr of as in microbiology and biotechnology so uh, because standing in this university in this hall if i fail to acknowledge injustice because all of them made me what i am today and uh, my sincere thanks to all of you for your patient hearing uh, and uh, i may differ with you uh, whatever i told i may differ with you with many of you but still i just try to do justice to the job what i have been given thank you thank you so much any students want to ask i think we are running short for time for i think gb or because when there is recessive gene essentially we have to keep because f1 has to be homozygous for the trait of interest so then only we can have the trait in f2 grains what uh, uh, yeah uh, now uh, that is a study going on like we are having a isogenic line of different combination so far what we have done there is no issue but yes we are having some study going on now uh, having one dominant other recessive like multiple combinations no it cannot be same because some background always plays a important role so we cannot expect same level of enhancement because they are all pathway genes we are targeting just one gene we do not know what is happening with other genes in the pathway yeah, definitely ma'am it will be more because for those endos actually the endosperm volume is more so if you look at the content they will definitely get high because grain size there will be heterosis and they can like the endosperm can accumulate more nutrients it is possible you know, it, it is it is mostly higher than the inbred side yeah. ma'am it we cannot say always it has a definite trend of increase or decrease but we do uh, we do get the lines having the desirable level of nutrient number of hybrid combination we pick them up only which is having better yield also with nutrient we can compromise for nutrient level but we cannot compromise for yield so we will definitely keep yield as high mark among them whatever is having better nutrient composition we will try to forward it hmm. okay ma'am as for yeah for uh, for uh, phosphorus yes it has a role on phytic acid for soil application of iron has influence on kernel iron other than that for none of the traits yes soil externally applied nutrient has having influence on these traits no yes ma'am they uh, they say microbiome based fire fortification and everything this is something yes that 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 yes ma'am that holds good for those nutrients which has role in 
uptake translocation like uptake translocation and accumulation okay on the other hand there are some competition only synthesized carotenoids they are synthesized in this in the, in the plant part so for there there is nothing like any external influence as well Ma'am, definitely iron phosphorus CRTRB1, O2, RVT4 are concerned. Absolutely fine. There is nothing like external factors influencing the gene. But yes, for the phytic acid part and iron and zinc, the soil application of the nutrients has influence on that uh, concentration of the nutrient in the grain. Okay. Hmm. Ma'am, uh, yeah, we we are develop an array of inbreds. We screen them in field. So we will try to ad we advance only those which has performed which has produced seed. See, after S4, S5, if I'm having inbred, it clearly shows it has performed well in the earlier generations. Otherwise, I cannot have an S5 line uh, of LPA1. Ma'am, mm. absolutely. Like, uh, ma'am, LPA1. Individually, there is no effect. LP one two combination. The student is working now. And the line is in field now. He has to uh, take out and do all seed based enzymatic activity and see. That is yet to be done. But he is, he, has, he got relieved. He got a assistant professor at some university in UP. He went in between. So he has to come back and complete. Hold for him. He will be joining in January from university. So he has to continue that and submit thesis. So in my case, I, they have to come and I will not do one give. So he have to come and finish and go. So. I am waiting for him to come and finish. <laughs> Sir, please. Yeah, yes. Yes. Uh, see, whatever induces, first I will start with inducers. Whatever inducers we have now, they are all from University of Hohenheim. So, Germany, they have a lot of IP restrictions. You can use it to make cross, but you can't even derive line out of it. So uh, we do brought, brought we do got those lines through cement with again a condition IP condition that you cannot use it to develop line and do hybrid. So now what I did is what we did is uh, our mentor is working on it. He uh, there are genes like MTL and uh, MTL and DMP genes. So he got some donor lines having MTL and DMP from US. In the US there is a system called as National Plant Germplasm System. They offer free germplasm after 15 years of ex expiry of IP protection. So you. They will give you all the mutants, whatever you ask. They will give 15 seeds. So it is good, at least you are getting. So we got those MTL DMP donors. We developed our own inducer lines. With those inducer lines, now we are developing our inverts. We are yet to see their induction potential and everything, which my mentor is working on. As for CRISPR, honestly, we have not started anything yet. Yes, like we cannot expand too much, you know, then our focus goes down and it needs really funding. So whatever we have, we are just focusing on. So for what I have shown. Good evening to everyone. I am very happy to be before you to propose a lot of thanks for this guest lecture given by Dr. Vignesh Muthusamy. We were very happy on seeing you as an alumni talking like this in front of us. And uh, a few minutes before I was talking about my teacher to you. And I was also happy on seeing those slides which you have put about your teachers who have brought you here. And uh, I thank all the ISPB office bearers as well as the students and everyone for attending this guest lecture. Thank you so much.